All right, guys. My name is Chris Gutierrez with Code Three Motors, longtime paramedic and diesel mechanic. Uh, I've got a 2008 uh, Chevy Express 3500 turbo diesel. It's got the Duramax 6.6 .6 motor, and it only has 46,000 miles. So let me give you a walk around tour, and uh, you'll see the paint is great. You cannot read what it used to say. Uh, uh, this belonged to a local hospital that only used it on campus. They had several outbuildings that they would shuttle patients to, uh, you know, to various facilities. And so that's why it has such low mileage. And it's in great shape. It's never had radios mounted in it. Uh, there's no holes or anything drilled into places that you normally see on an ambulance uh, in the front or back. And it has brand new tires that were dismounted this week. Goodyear Wrangler HT 10 ply tires. So uh, <coughs> let's go ahead, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Something in the air. All right, let me, uh, we'll start going through all the exterior compartments. And then we're gonna get in the back, we're gonna get in the front, we're gonna look under the chassis, we're gonna go for a test drive. This is the O2 compartment. You can see the regulator is there. This thing is deployment ready, it doesn't need anything. Uh, it's set up for an M tank, so if you need an H tank, that rack would not work. This is not an adjustable rack. Most people do not use an H tank, so uh, this should be fine. And your Star of Life sticker is right there. Wheeled Coach is the coach builder. So there's that compartment. And here we have the inverter, the suction motor, and a space there for emergency equipment down below. Back here is the backboard compartment. It's set up to hold three backboards or flats. Uh, it's big enough for a scoop stretcher. You can see there's three belts there, so you can hold each belt in place. So when you undo one of these for a backboard, all three of them don't come falling out on you. There's that. Uh, we'll get in the back in a second. Back here's a spare tire that looks like it's never seen the road. So there is that. Up here is your compartment where you would have your jump bag, your portable suction, portable oxygen, everything you're going to take into your rescue right there. So let's get this thing fired up. It doesn't have any leaks. Uh, there's nothing weird about this ambulance. It fires right up. It drives great. Suspension's good. I'll, I'll go over all of the mechanical stuff. Oh, well here's a sneak preview of the interior, but we'll get in here in a minute. You'll notice that the interior is mint. No scratches, uh, no tears, no mars of any kind. The floor, everything, but we'll get in there in just a second. Let's get in the back. And uh, it's the same great condition back here. Oh, I should point out, these uh, chevrons, this is just vinyl. If these colors don't work for you, we can pull this off. We can also pull the vinyl stripes off the side, make this a virgin white ambulance if you need that. If blue is not your color, um, we can take it completely white for you if you want. Uh, it does include a gurney. This particular ambulance is set up for a one-man gurney. That's what this, it's a, it's a Ferno, uh, Ma, it's a Ferno Flex 2033. If you're familiar with the Ferno Model 28, uh, it's a variant of the 28. So one man, they call it a one man gurney because it just takes one man to load it. It's got a collapsible undercarriage so that when you pull the lever and hit the deck, the legs uh, fold under automatically. So there's that. It does have floor mounts for a striker though. So if you use a striker MX Pro or a Power Pro or an Easy Pro, it does have the side floor mount and the, the antler mounts up there for a striker. And you'll notice the floor, it's like the rubberized diamond plate. It's in perfect condition. It's just a little dirty from walking on it, but there are no scuffs, there are no tears, there's no cracks or anything anywhere. And you'll notice that the laminate's in great condition. There's no mars, there are no weird holes, nothing was, you know, some, you know, weird thing mounted. Uh, sometimes guys will mount cup holders for their big gulp and stuff. There's nothing like that in here. So, let me go. 
So this is, this compartment here is big for a stair chair. Yeah, you could put a front of a stair chair in there. I don't know if a striker stair chair would fit in there. It doesn't look deep enough to me for a striker. But it, it will take a ferno up above another spot for something shallow. You could put uh, Mrs. Basin's bedpans, urinals, stuff like that in there. <clears throat> you have your cabinets up there in the middle with an adjustable shelf. Down below, another uh, two big spaces with adjustable shelves. And then above the action wall, you'll see there's another... Uh, compartment for BVMs, oxygen mask, cannulas, all that stuff. On the action wall, we have our air conditioning or heat. That's coming out there. Oh yeah, you'll also notice above the side door is a glove a compartment for gloves for small, medium, and large, or medium, large, extra large. Up above there, and there's a canister for emesis basin or emesis bags uh, and so that is our how you turn the heat and cool on and off the speed selector next to it that's high and you can see it's blowing pretty good off of the, the net there and then there's a low which you can barely hear and medium so there's that our dome lights, we have high, medium, uh, high and low, uh, and then for both sides. So right now it's on, it's on high, that's low, there's high again. Over on that side it's on high, there's low, and then there. And then you'll notice our fluorescent lamps. We have three banks of fluorescent lamps. And then we have a fluorescent lamp over here. If you just want a little bit of light for a patient care report or something like that. It has automatic door locks, which if you look at that right there, you see the knob moving. That is a great feature. And then to turn the inverter on, it's switch, boom. You just hit that up and now the inverter is hot. Turn that off there. Uh, the exhaust fan, if there are odors back here that you don't want, uh, what is my... Oh, is my thing telling me I'm almost out of tape? There's your exhaust fan. Let me uh, see. I might have to delete some old files in order to keep this going. Let me see. And then here's our suction. And then if you look at the suction dial. And then if you want to increase it or decrease it, you just do it from there. I'm going to pause this real quick and make sure I have adequate storage space for this recording. Hold on. All right, we're back. Uh, I do. I had to delete some files. So uh, our thermostat, this is what determines if we have heat or cool. It looks like it's never been touched, uh, probably because the transport's pretty short in between the various hospital buildings that this ambulance operated in. But when you're in, in heat or cool, you just turn the dial into whatever temperature you want, and that's how that works. Uh, there's the suction canister there. There is a airflow regulator, uh, airflow meter on the wall. There's a second port over here. There's also one on the bench seat side. If you have a patient on the bench seat, you'll also notice the upholstery is mint condition. There are no tears. There are no marks. It barely looks like it's been sat on. Same thing with the back end. And the jump seat is excellent condition. Over here is access to that outside compartment that uh, we looked at. And so if you want to access that portable equipment from inside, you can do that. Uh, the electronics are up here and wheel coach, uh, fantastic electronics. I've never had a problem ever with the wheel coach. I probably had 200 wheel coach ambulances. I've never had a problem with any of the, the electronics. So uh, occasionally these relays will go out. You can get those at Napa for about 30 bucks. That's the only thing I've ever had an issue with. But uh, that's the relay board. There's where all of the connections go to, to those uh, bus bars there. And then here are the solenoids. And you can kind of see all of our power 
two various items down there. I can't open the door much more because of the jump seat. Oh yeah, the jump seat, well, you know, if you wanted to, there is a, is it on this side? Yeah. You'll see there's a lever right there. So the seat does swivel. If you had like a nurse or a third rider that wants to look out the windshield, that seat can turn around so you can look straight ahead. Uh, there is space here for sharps container and infectious waste, but there's no, uh, there's neither and those containers are not in there. You would lift this up to put that in there. So there's that. Below the bench seat, there's a very small space for pillows, blankets, whatnot, that could go there. And let's see, uh, if you don't need the gurney, if you don't like the one-man gurney, if you have a striker and you plan on using a striker, uh, we can definitely shave some, uh, a little bit off the price of this uh, to, you know, if you don't need it, you don't need it. Oh, and we can also take the ramp off, because the one-man uh, gurney, because it has it requires a lower deck than what this rig has. There's a ramp on there. So if you need the ramp removed in a yellow catch hook for the striker, we can install that. We do that kind of stuff all the time. So uh, there's that. There's also reach through for the oxygen compartment so you can turn on and off your tank as needed. There's also a spot there for two additional D tanks or E tanks, those don't matter. You can have E or D with that kind of a rack. And that is the back. So let's go ahead, let's jump in the front. And uh, actually, you know, let's look under the undercarriage real quick, and then we will jump in the front. So, there's no rust or anything like that. It's very clean, let me see if we get under there. And, you'll, and again, the, you know, it's got the spare tires in the side compartment, so we'll look at the tires. They're brand new, so the tread couldn't be better. All six tires match. All six were just replaced this week. And uh, there's this tire. I mean, I'm gonna pop the hood. Oh, actually, let's look through. Let's look under the front real quick. Well, you can't really see much because of the shroud that's there. You can see better from the side. I think we already got it. Uh, let me pop the hood. Are you kidding me? Did I lock myself out? I might have to go get my spare key. Nope. Let me, uh... So, when you do this... <laughs> when you do this lock, unlock, that's for everything, including the front. And, uh... So, let me... Get back out. All right. Okay. Um, let me see if the sun's gonna be. No. Well, it might be a problem. Let me see. 